I took a struggling two-person online marketing agency and turned it into a $5 million per year business. I built a team of over 30 employees and made the Inc. 5000 list of fastest growing companies in the United States four years in a row. Using my knowledge and experience, I've also started helping other agencies across many different industries scale to seven figures. In the last seven years, we've actually helped 100 agencies hit that million dollar mark. So it's safe to say that I know a thing or two about how to scale an agency. In this video, I wanna give you the exact step-by-step -step blueprint I would follow if I were to start an agency in 2024 and scale it to a million dollars per year. My goal with this video is to literally hold hands your way to seven figures. No matter if you're just starting out, you're making five to $15,000 a month or already generating multiple six figures per year, this video will give you the exact steps you need to scale your agency to the next level. Quick disclaimer before we get into it. There's no point watching a video like this if you won't take action and implement what you learn after. So if you're not serious about scaling your agency, you'd be better off just to click off and not waste your time with this video. Now that we only have the winners in here, let's get into it. All right, let's get into it. So if I were starting from scratch, right? I don't have an agency. I don't have any client experience. I don't have a niche that I've already got notoriety in. I would recognize that every agency goes through four key stages of growth, right? First of all, you start out in startup, right? In startup, you're less than $10,000 per month, and it's just about getting some clients, getting some revenue, choosing viability within the niche, right? And then you get to stability between $10,000 and $30,000 a month of recurring revenue, where it first to be about, let's make sure we retain those clients that we've just gotten. Let's ramp up the sales and marketing process, develop some of our positioning, then we get to scale where it starts to become more about building the systems, building the team, making sure that we continue to grow the business while maintaining quality standards and maintaining retention. And then we get to scale, which is where we're 70,000 plus, when we're going to the $83,000 a month, seven figure agency territory. And it becomes more about implementing leadership, putting a team in place that can start to run each of the different areas within the business. And so I'm gonna take you through that process as if I was starting at one and take you through all four of those stages of agency growth. Sounds good? Hit the like button if you're excited. I know I'm excited to unpack this for you. Step number one, we're, we're in that startup phase. First thing I would wanna do is get a, a hypothetical niche. I, I know that I've told you guys in a lot of these videos and what worked best for me was to choose one particular vertical, position yourself as the go-to expert and get clients to come to you pre-positioned to buy. Now, in startup, you may not have that niche yet. You may not have that experience. And so what I would do is I would pick a hypothetical niche, knowing you know what, it might not be right, but hopefully it is based on my past experience, my personal connections, my affinity, like what industries am I interested in? I would kind of research like what are those niches that I might potentially go into and try and find the path of least resistance. Based on that, I would then want to try and develop a program with the unique mechanism. Rather than just saying, oh, I'm going to do digital marketing for pool companies, I would want to really try and engineer something specific for that industry, knowing that any industry, home services, legal, everything in between, they've all used a variety of marketing services in the past for SEO, for pay-per-click, for social media, for Facebook ads. And for the most part, they feel burned and they feel jaded. And so if we can't have a unique mechanism, a unique description of what we're doing, a unique program package, we're not gonna stand out. They're not gonna give us the opportunity. That would be the prerequisite. Let's come up with the hypothetical niche. Let's develop a program that we believe has a unique mechanism. And then I would wanna try and find the lowest hanging opportunity, which would be my sphere of influence and local opportunities. And you know, I'm a big believer eventually, we want clients all throughout the country. We want international clients within one particular niche. But the easiest place to land those first handful of clients is in your backyard. It's it working with your friends, your family, your friends of family. So I would make a list. Who are the people I know that are in that industry? So we'll just say we're gonna focus on pool builders, right? So I would be like, who do I know that, that runs a pool building company? Who do I know that worked at a pool company? Who do I know that knows people that might work in a pool company. And I would make that list because that's going to be the lowest hanging opportunity, not to sell this program, but to reach out and say, Hey, look, I'm, I'm looking to launch an updated version of my agency. That's going to focus on pool builders. I know you've got some background in that space. Would love to schedule a couple minutes of your time just to kind of learn about the industry, kind of brainstorm what I'm thinking about, what we could bring to the table, any insights you have on like where I might plug in and 
maybe some opportunities to go to market. Can you see how if you had that affinity list, maybe you've got one or two people that you know, you're gonna create some conversations and you're gonna get some, potentially some ideas and some introductions to somebody they might know that could give you more details and more information. So I would start there. And then the second thing is I would look for a local opportunities. I'd pick a pick, a pick a list of 10 local companies within that space. I figure out who the owner is. I'd look up their website. I'd look up their social profiles, not to sell them, but just to say, Hey, look, I'm based in Miami. I've got an agency. I'm looking to work with pool builders. I see that you've got a very successful pool building business. I was hoping I could just get a couple minutes of your time to learn more about your business, to think about, to learn about how you market yourself, some of the challenges you might be facing, and just to bounce some ideas against you with what I'm thinking about doing and where I think I can help the industry. That's how you approach those conversations. You're not coming to sell them your agency service. You're coming to have a business conversation. Out of those 10, ideally we'll get a couple of them that meet, have a conversation. Maybe they're interested in doing something with us. That's not the goal. Maybe they know somebody that needs these types of services right now. Maybe there's local groups and meetups in that particular industry that they can plug me into. That's what I would be looking for for those local business connections. I'd also be looking for networking opportunities. Personally, I've done the BNI thing. I'm not a big fan of it. I don't like going every Wednesday at 6 a.m. and sitting at the breakfast meal and doing my, my commercial. But the fastest way to get introductions is to go where your clients are hanging out, your prospects are hanging out, where other business people are hanging out. So I'd find the local BNI meeting. I'd find the Chamber of Commerce. I'd find local meetups not across the country, but just in my local three city area, I would go hang out. I would say, hey, look, I run an agency. I'm looking to get introduced into pool build companies. You know, we do websites and SEO and pay-per-click, help them get more jobs. Would love to be in, 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 any introductions you can make. And, and you might be surprised that they have somebody they can plug you right into. You might be surprised that there might be a couple of prospects in that local pool. This would be my approach, as opposed to just getting a list right out of the gates and calling a bunch of people and trying to solicit, my goal in the startup phase would be to get a couple of clients within the niche. And then once I got them, knock it out of the park for them. Like literally get side by side, understand their business, understand their goals, understand how they're marketing today, and take everything I know about digital marketing, websites, SEO, pay-per-click, social media, email marketing, marketing automation, Facebook advertising, customize a program that would just provide ridiculous results for them. So they would be willing to refer us to others. They'd be willing to be a testimonial, be willing to be a case study. So in that startup phase, work your sphere of influence, work your local connections, get a couple of clients, do it at a low cost if you have to, to prove the model, to, to prove the results, and then document everything you did. So this was the pool company we started working with. This was the program we mapped out. This is what we did. These are the results that they've gotten. Trust me, the investment that you make in that relationship, in that outcome early, will accelerate the growth of your digital marketing agency in that niche market. In addition to that, kind of as I'm building this up, as I'm getting these case studies, I would have a minimum of five new prospects I'd be connecting with in that niche. I would be connecting on Facebook, connecting on LinkedIn, connecting on Instagram, making phone calls, and talking with more and more people within the space. Relatively quickly, we'll get to $10,000 or more in monthly recurring revenue. Probably about five clients at $2,000 per month, we're, we're ready to move to the next stage, which is stability. And stability is between $10,000 and $30,000 in monthly recurring revenue. At this point, you've got a handful of clients, you've got some proven results, you've got some case studies, and it's time to accelerate the growth. And we're gonna do that through a number of different ways. Number one is we're gonna join the National Association. So I would say, I've got some results here in pools. What's the National Pool Building Association? Is there a pool contractors community that I can plug into? And I can tell you in just about every vertical there are. I would join that so that I could get the list, right, of all of those active members. I would join that so that I could get the credential to say, hey, we're actively involved in the Pool Build Association. And I would do that so that I could find opportunities to plug in to their live events that are happening maybe nationally and local. There's probably local Florida-based, where I'm in Miami, Florida-based pool contractor gatherings that I can go to and meet contractors and have conversations and share the results that we're getting with the clients that we work with. So I would join the association and then I would, I would get a list of 
the top 20% of pool contractors in the country. So I would say, okay, I know there's probably 10,000 or more pool building contractors. I want the ones doing over a million dollars per year, doing multiple installations that have at least one full-time crew and they run this like a true business. That would be the list that I would want to reach out to via email. I would want to add as a custom audience on Facebook so that I could do some outreach and do some, some marketing to. And then I would turn on a couple of advertising strategies. I would run Facebook ads to that targeted audience. I would run Google ads for the very specific searches like pool builder marketing, how to grow my pool business. And I would have a retargeting strategy in place so that anybody that gets into our funnel, gets into our world, starts to see our ads and our case studies across the web. Two critical things in stability. First of all, I, I'm gonna document our case studies for the handful of clients that we have, get the testimonials, get the results, and make sure that we're advertising that on Facebook, on our website, and in the industry. Second thing I would be focused on is, at this point, to go from 10,000 to 30,000, I need to start to remove myself from doing the operations, right? If I'm still building the websites, if I'm still setting up the marketing automations, that's gonna bottleneck my growth. And so I, I, I'm gonna look strategically in this stability phase to hire someone that can handle the operations. Kind of an, an operations person that can work with contractors like freelance employees and can also do some of the work, maybe the website builds and maybe some of the content development. That's the very specific role you're looking to hire in that stability phase. With that marketing, you're gonna get appointments, you're going to get sales, you're gonna quickly grow through that $30,000 threshold to the $40,000 to $70,000 mark, which is what we call the scale stage in the agency. And at this point, I would implement our growth system, which I'll kind of in Cliff Notes version, I would implement every day, some type of cold outbound marketing happening. I would have a marketing assistant that has two responsibilities. They're helping to follow up on leads. They're helping to reach out and connect with new prospects. And they're helping to manage the marketing logistics, the marketing stuff that we're doing within the agency. I'd be running Facebook ads every single day, targeting those pool build companies. So they're seeing my case studies. They're seeing the results that we get. They're, they're getting the opportunity to schedule in with us. And I'd be putting out content on a daily basis, on short form, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, pool builders, if they're on social media, we know that they are, they're gonna see, hey, like what's Shash up to? Oh, look at the result he got for this pool company. Oh, look what he's doing with marketing automation. Look what the, the different strategies he's helping to implement. So that will be happening daily. Monthly, I would do two critical activities. Every month, I would run a new value-based webinar and it would be around the different topics, how to set up your pool contracting website to convert visitors into estimates, and jobs, how to get your pool company ranked for the most important keywords where your customers are searching, how to leverage paid ads, how to use marketing automation. Every month I would come on and create a 45 minute to an hour long piece of content. I invite all of those prospects. I advertise it on Facebook. I'd reach out to the associations that I'm part of and see if they can invite and or co-promote those webinars with me. And that's going to position me as the go-to expert in that pool space. And before long, we'll have clients coming to us pre-positioned to buy. So monthly webinar, in addition to a monthly podcast. So I would launch a podcast specifically targeting pool builders. And it would be me reaching out and interviewing successful pool build contractors, the ones doing 2 million, 5 million, $10 million per year. And I just say, hey, it looks like you're crushing in your pool business. I'd love to interview you on how you're marketing yourself, you know, what you're doing in order to keep the phones ringing, how you're expanding your crew and finding good tech, good technicians to do those types of installs. I would have like a five to six question interview that I would then post on YouTube, put on my blog, put on iTunes, mark it out to the industry. Those two simple activities done once per month will make us, without question, the most prolific pool building agency in the industry. Daily, we got that activity. Monthly, we're doing the webinar, the podcast, and then quarterly, we're doing an industry event. So we're finding a pool convention, a pool trade show, a pool conference that we can be at with a booth. Ideally, we're gonna say, hey, look, we've got lots of great case studies and results that we've done for other pool contractors. Would we'll love to come and do a quick teach, whether it's live stage or just a little breakout to share how other pool contractors can generate better results online. I'd be at least once a quarter live and in person, ideally speaking, that way we're continuing to position ourselves. We're, we're meeting with people face-to-face -face outside of them just seeing us online. I'd also once a month be documenting a new case study for one of the pool con contractors we're working with. Here's what they tried and where they didn't get results. Here's what we did and here's the result. 
Here's where they rank. Here's how many leads they're getting. Here's how many installs they've gotten. Here's how much money they're making now. And here's how we help them change their life. That's what we'd be doing on a very consistent basis to keep the funnel full so that we can absolutely break through that $70,000 mark as quickly as possible. Probably some of the benchmarks would be shooting for at least 15 strategy sessions per month within the pool building space. We would make sure we've got a nice tight appointment funnel where people schedule in, they come in pre-positioned to buy. We have a great sales process where we can warm prospects up and, and show them our value and, and get them to say yes. And then we'd really focus on the delivery side of the, of the equation, our onboarding, our communication with them, how we're showing the value and helping them see why they're paying us. And we'd start to develop that account management infrastructure so that me or the team aren't the only ones talking with the clients, retaining those clients. The target we'd be shooting for is 30% close ratio and then a 97% monthly retention average within our client base. That's what we would be doing from a marketing perspective. I'd be hyper-focused at the scale phase on dialing in onboarding and building out that account management team, right? Having someone that can really manage that conversation with the client. So I, as the owner, can focus on continuing to market, continuing to scale, continuing to take the business to the next level. We would definitely be able to push with that through the seven figure mark where we get $83,000 or more in monthly recurring revenue. And at that stage, it's really starting to shift from just selling, just like running the day-to-day -to, -day, to stepping into the CEO role within the business, which is where we start to focus on implementing EOS, the entrepreneur operating system and putting a leadership team in place. So there's leadership in operations, there's leadership in SEO, there's leadership in paint search, there's leadership in account management and people solely accountable for making sure the company's moving forward in each of those areas. I'd also be seeking out joint venture opportunities, 10X opportunities, where we can quickly go from a million to, to, to 10 million over the next couple of years. A couple of well-placed joint ventures, the people that have the relationships with everybody in that industry that we can find a win-win will absolutely accelerate us to the next level. Also at this significant space, I'd be looking to find a salesperson already getting a consistent 15 to 25 strategy sessions per month. I would want to remove myself from those sales conversations so that we really have a business at this point where clients are marketed to, they raise their hand, they schedule in, there's a salesperson that has that sales process. Then once the deal is sold, there's an account manager that onboards them, gets the username's passwords, and then the operations side does the work, fulfills the work, and the clients are being marketed to, sold, and managed without me as the owner being actively involved. And that's truly where your business starts to come full circle. And really at this stage is where we start to focus on building out that hiring process, elevating the onboarding process, and really how we recruit and onboard talent so that we can keep up with the demand as the business continues to grow. That's it. I've walked you through those four stages of agency growth and how I would approach them from startup to stability to scale all the way through significance. This is the exact roadmap you can follow to scale your agency to seven figures. But obviously this is just a general guide. Growing a digital marketing agency is much more nuanced than this and watching one YouTube video obviously won't give you all the information you need. And that's exactly why I created a full seven module course with the exact breakdown of the strategies we've used to help over 100 agencies scale to seven figures and beyond. You literally get a 120 page implementation workbook as well as over eight hours of video content where we break down our proven strategies for scaling agencies to a million dollars in dozens of different industries. And the best part is it's completely free. If you're an agency owner and you're looking to land more clients, deliver better results and make much more money in your agency, then make sure to click the first link in description and get instant access to the full training. Again. It's totally free. So click the first link and start taking action today. And if you found this video valuable, please subscribe to our channel and I'll see you on the next video.